Tonight I am talking with Intronaut, the band who in my humble opinion made the best album of 2015. Thank you. The most adventurous album also. Mm. I wondered if we could start by asking you, could you introduce yourselves to the readers of the website fuck.nl, F-O-K. Okay, okay. alright. <laughs> uh, my name is David. Uh, I play guitar and sing in Intronaut. And who are the other members oh, of the band? Uh, Joe Lester is our bass player. Uh, Danny Walker is our drummer. And the other guitar player and singer is Sasha Dunnable. If I'm, re I'm informed correctly, the band was formed from people who were already in other bands. Yeah, it was, um, Danny was friends with Sasha. Joe knew Sasha. I was friends with Joe. So it just kind of went back several different relationships back to like middle school and high school. And, and then, you know, everyone was doing different musical things. Um, and then kind of it just all came together, you know, uh, sometime around 2004, 2005. When you listen to the, the sound of the day of Internaut, can you still hear influences from the previous bands in there? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I don't even know if you necessarily hear them, but, you know, you can't, you almost can't get away from what you've done in the past necessarily, you know. Um, it's always going to be kind of an influence on how you evolve in the future. So I think that everybody's musical backgrounds and other bands they've played in or other styles of music they've played have all played a part in, you know, the Intronauts sound. By the way, how did you get the name for the band, Intronaut? You know what, I wasn't around for the, for the naming. Um, I'm not sure how exactly they came up with it, but I think it was really just one of those things where they were trying to find a name and everyone was shouting different things out and someone said that, I don't even remember who, um, and it just stuck. It's at least an original name. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like it's suitable, you know, if an astronaut explores astral space, then yeah. an intronaut explores inner space. Kind of cheesy, but, you know, it works for us. <laughs> you recently, uh, I, re I know you recently released your uh, latest album. That was produced by Devin Townsend. It was mixed by Devin Townsend. Oh, or mixed, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But how did you get in touch with him? We, uh, I think our manager knows a guy, I mean, you know, like, he's a staple in the progressive rock scene, and, you know, we're somewhere in the progressive rock metal scene, so we have a lot of mutual friends or mutual connections, and uh, we wanted to have somebody really good mix our record this time around so we decided to record the album live. Uh, so we recorded it live in four days which we did I guess for two reasons. One, you know kind of as maybe a response to the fact that most of the bands in our genre right now are doing so much you know studio magic and overproduction and quantizing and everything we just kind of wanted to get away from that, you know, we're a live band, so we recorded live, but we also did it to save money so that we could use money to get someone really good to mix the record, because we'd been less than thrilled at some of the previous mixes going back on our records, and we really wanted, we are waiting to have a record that sounds the way that we sound when we play live, and I think this record was really the first time that happened, so Devin did a great job, and so did our buddy Josh Newell, who's the guy who's a sound engineer uh, for the record who produced it. Weren't you kind of like afraid of what he would do with the recordings when you got it? Not really, to? not really. Um, because listening to any records he's ever mixed, they all sound good, they all sound real. And it, I feel like, you know, it's pretty obvious, at least to me, when we hand over, you know, the recorded version of us playing these songs live, like, it almost, to my ears, and I would assume to his as well, because it ended up sounding this way, um, that it doesn't really call for a lot of uh, extra stuff or, or changing of things. I mean, he sent us his first rough pass at a mix, and we're like, that's great, that's perfect. 
Okay. So yeah, there was no no issues there. You already mentioned that you recorded the album live. I didn't know you did it in live. So yeah. I said. yeah. But you recorded it in four days. Yes. How do you manage to make such complex recordings happen in such a short time? Is well, the recording itself, you know, I mean, we. I feel like there's two different kinds of bands. One kind of band that goes into the studio and they, that's where they put all their stuff together and that's how they make it sound the way they want it to sound. And then after that's done, then they go and figure out how they're going to play that live and what they need, backing tracks, whatever. We are the opposite, where we write all our music first, you know, where our songs are done, the vocals are done, we've been playing them, you know, every day for months and months and months uh, before we even go into the studio. So we could go, we could, we're ready to play shows by the time we're recording our album. So it really wasn't that. Um, it was exhausting because it was just four, you know, 12 to 14 hour days. Those but are long sessions. Very long sessions. Yeah. But um, as far as getting the recording itself, I mean, we already knew all the songs inside out. So playing them well and playing them together is not, wasn't really an issue for us, you know. Okay. Can you tell me some more about the writing process? of the last album? Um, yeah, we uh, we basically just kind of work in two different ways where on the, on the one hand we all do stuff on our own, we all come up with riffs or rhythms or parts, you know, skeletons of songs or, or whatever and we do that on our own and then bring it into, you know, either send it through email or just bring it to practice and everyone listens and we work from there or we just have long jams at the practice space and just kind of we see what happens and we piece stuff together it's kind of a little bit of everything we don't really have like a specific writing process it's just there's no rules we just do it however we see fit sometimes one person will write an entire song on their own and then you know everyone else still has to learn the parts and they end up changing a little bit when you get your hands on them and make them your own but sometimes songs are written out of a complete you know jam that started from nothing and becomes something so it's different okay. every time but then when you go to the studio you have the songs rehearsed oh, many yeah. times like absolutely they fit like a few exactly <laughs> uh, not so long ago i uh, had an interview with uh, michael wilton of queensrike and he told me that most bands record more songs than they actually are using on an album. I wondered, was it also with your band? No, we haven't done that. Um, I mean, we've had like a song maybe sometimes, one song, maybe two songs that too many that we use for like a, you know, special European release of the album or maybe something to release several months after the album comes out, but normally by the time we have an album, we're, we don't have a lot of songs that end up on the cutting room floor. You know, we, there's not usually too much left over by the time we're done with an album. We just start, start from scratch after that every time. Okay. Yeah. Then, in, how long did you completely work on the realization of this uh, last album? Um, I, it's hard to say. Uh, probably, you know, from beginning to end, maybe like a year between like as far as when the first riffs were starting to be written by Sasha and by myself to us starting to practice more to putting everything together to finalizing vocals and everything to recording all of that probably about a year okay yeah so it's a whole process yeah it's you know we basically when we get home from touring we just start writing new music and then maybe some more tours come up so that we go back out on the road and it kind of interrupts the writing process and then we come back home and then we just write. So anytime we're not on tour, we're writing music. Uh, and then once we have enough to go on, then we just keep the ball rolling for new albums. Uh, I was also wondering about the, the title of the album, the, the direction of all things. The direction of last, of last things. things, yeah. yeah. Um, it's actually... Uh, it's actually a way that 
a direction that people were more like medieval times uh, it had to do with the direction your body was facing when it was buried when you were dead you know which would affect what happened to you in the afterlife or whatever you know um, we don't take that super seriously or literally but seemed kind of like a cool concept um, and it's called the direction of last things so that was just something that got thrown out it was already a a song title and I had you know uh, lyrics to go with it and everyone just kind of liked it as an album title too so kept it and it's also a title on which you can uh, put a lot of different explanations exactly exactly <laughs> like to keep it uh, nice and vague so that people can kind of get their own interpretation of it when I listened to your latest album I got a feeling as if I'm making a, a trip to time I listened to the good elements of the previous album all mixed together at one. Yeah. Is, that, is that how you see it also? Yeah, I mean it wasn't intentional, but we definitely got back to some of the heavier riffs that maybe weren't as present in our two previous albums while we were kind of exploring a new direction as far as songwriting and melodic vocals and vocal harmonies and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think we just not you know unconsciously or subconsciously just kind of wanted to continue in the direction we were going with you know trying to have better songs you know better songwriting but also kind of just just have kind of a kick in the balls maybe you know with some with some new heavy riffs you know just to let people know that we haven't gotten soft <laughs> oh i have to say i like the soft part of the band also yeah yeah us too uh, a friend of mine has the final version of the last album, and that one has a, a bonus track on it, The Valley of Smoke, in a remix. Oh. Is this a new song? Or no. a new composition? Or a No, we had, um, back when Valley of Smoke came out, we had a bit of a, I guess, a contest, where we s uh, made available all the different stems for the song Valley of Smoke, because there's so many different tracks, you know, Danny's playing drums, I'm playing drum set, I'm playing tabla and guitar, Sasha's playing guitar, Joe's playing bass, Justin Chancellor from Tool is playing bass. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's a big, you know, mess of a song. Yeah. So we made all the different individual stems available and we had a contest for people to remix it and the winner got something, I don't remember what, but this was back when Valley of Smoke came out and we just really liked the one that the winner did. And we were thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we had something extra to put on the album for like, I think it was like if you pre-ordered it or something, I'm not sure, I don't remember. But, uh, and we just thought like, oh, hey, what about that remix that that guy did? Alex Crane was his name. That okay. Did it. Um, and uh, so we just threw it on the album. Why not? Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> In 2008, you recorded a song for a Sid Barrett tribute album. I was wondering, did did you uh, get to choose a song yourself? Or did yeah. You? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why you chose Arnold Lane? I don't think we really had like a. You know, we were we had, we had seen certain other songs that other bands had already picked, um, and we were just kind of listening through that older Pink Floyd stuff, um, the Sid Barrett era stuff, and I don't know. We just heard that song and thought that it sounded ripe for intranotification, so we kind of sunk our claws into it and tore it apart, so to speak. But I noticed you never did it live? No. Yeah, recently I watched on YouTube a, a kind of a making of of the, the last album, in which I can see a row of guitars and equipment. Is uh, that all your stuff? Of the yeah. Band? yeah, it must be. Holy smoke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we don't really have too much gear. I mean we all just have our our own amps and we you know we have a couple of guitars each. Um, Joe's got an extra bass. But we don't really have too much gear. I mean we have like Sasha will have two guitars and I have two guitars and Joe has two basses and Danny's got his drums and you know, we got our amps, we just plug in and play, so much less gear than many, many bands.
these days. Okay, but I was wondering, do you have a, a special guitar that you call your, uh, that's your favorite? Or? Uh, I have a couple different special guitars that I call my favorite, and uh, they're all made by Sasha, actually. He makes guitars. Okay. He makes all the guitars that both he plays and that I play, uh, Dunnable guitars. Wow. Check them out. <laughs> um, they're great, fantastic guitars. Um, he makes all different kinds of uh, body styles and, you know, uses different woods, put, you know, different kinds of pickups. He makes it all himself and it's a quality product. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow will be our last show in Germany and then the Euro tour is over. Yes. How do you look back on this tour? The tour has been great. It's been so much fun. Um, uh, Shining from Norway has been great. Uh, Obsidian Kingdom from Spain has been great. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, played a lot of shows and, you know... I believe 23 shows in 24 days? Yeah, it's Counting the one of tomorrow? Exactly, yeah. Wow. Uh, and then we fly back to the States and we immediately start another 32 shows tour with, uh, in the United States and Canada with Gorguts. So that's going to be really fun. Those are good, fr good friends of ours and amazing band. So the show should be pretty crazy, and we just jump right into that the minute we get home. So uh, we don't get to sleep in our own beds until sometime in November. <laughs> okay. So whenever that happens, it'll, it'll be really Aren't nice. Aren't you never getting tired of all the traveling? No. Because you make so many miles. Yeah, we get tired sometimes, but I don't get tired of traveling. I mean, we don't get to do a lot of sightseeing or touristy stuff, but I mean, we're playing rock and roll shows every night. It's, that's that's why that's why we're here. <laughs> and you play for people who appreciate it. Exactly. That's that's the dream. <laughs> In that case, I was wondering, what do you do on the road when you're on the way? I I believe you have a tour bus or something. Yeah, we've got a tour bus on this tour. We more often than not, we tour in like a van with a trailer. You know, we are not a big money band, but uh, for this tour, all the bands pitched in to share a tour bus. So we've got about twenty guys on the tour bus. 19 guys and one girl, <laughs> poor, poor girl, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's nice, I mean, you know, sleep at night, I, you know, a lot of us read, um, exercise whenever you can, um, drink beers here in the Netherlands, uh, us California boys are partial to the marijuana, so, okay. so we're always happy to be in the, in the Netherlands, um, it's been a very nice last few days. <laughs> I believe you have good dispensaries over there also. Yes, we do, yes. <laughs> so it feels like home when we're over here. <laughs> oh, that's always good to hear. Yeah, and the, the people are amazing. I think the Netherlands is my favorite country in Europe. I mean, uh, the people are just, that I've interacted with anywhere, it's so, so nice. All the staff at the venues are really professional. The women are beautiful. The food is good. So I like it here. Right. When I look back in the past of the band, you have played the States with way too many bands to mention them all. Yeah. But which one was the most inspiring band for you to play with? I'd say probably either Meshuggah or Tool. Um, Tool was kind of like a, you know, almost like a dream come true can imagine. type gig. I can only um, imagine that. Meshuggah was honestly probably better for us as a band because of what they're doing right now. You know, they're a little more active. It's a little more relevant to the scene. Um, you know, we gained a lot more fans and gained a lot more friends and more touring opportunities through that Meshuggah tour than we did the Tool tour. You know, the Tool tour was almost just like this isolated event, you know, frozen in time. <laughs> yeah. This band that's like larger than life. So Experience. It's pretty cool. You know, it was the guys who were Danny Carey, he was like my drum hero growing up because uh, I played drums as well. and. Now he calls me in the afternoon to go drink beer. Uh, never would have thought that that would be my life. So, pretty pretty happy with that. I can ima only imagine that. <laughs> Are there still any bands that you never p played with, with which you would love to tour? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Opeth. Yeah, well. I was wondering about that, especially because they're, of the last two albums. They're like between, if we had like a, a bucket list, you know, Tool, Meshuggah, 
Mastodon, these are bands we've got to tour with already, and if I had to add one more on there to complete the list, it would probably be Opeth. Uh, I think that their fans would really like our music. Um, and uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Be, you know, maybe it'll happen one day, who knows. That would Crazier be... things have happened. <laughs> yeah, so. but it will be an explosive bill. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And also, uh, the Deftones is a band that I'd really like to tour with. Um, again, we have a lot of mutual friends with them. Um, we've toured twice with Animals as Leaders, but like they're like our really good friends, also from Los Angeles, and uh, we just have a blast with them, so hopefully we get to tour with them again as well. I'm sure we probably will. And last year you toured with Between the Buried and the Dead, I believe? Between the Buried and me, yeah. We've toured, oh, with, yeah. Them. We've toured with them twice in the last two years, actually. And they're great, great guys, great band as well. Yeah. When you look back at the, uh, the, the history of the band up to now, what do you consider the highlights? Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, I feel like every, every tour has its own highlights. And, you know, I can't really put one experience or one group of experiences above the others, you know, they've all been, we've all been different and they've, it's just been so much fun and so many, you know, cool people that we've met and, and fans that seem to really connect with our music um, that I couldn't really say for certain, any certain highlights or what was the best. I mean, every, every tour is a is a new experience and uh, we always manage to have fun. And In a way, every day is a highlight. Exactly, yeah. You know, you never know if you're gonna have a great show or a shit show or if you're gonna have the time of your life and get into some trouble or have a, you know, get sick for five days. I mean, it's all a lot of up and down, but uh, it's exciting, if nothing else. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I got one question left. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you can already expect it because it's a question that has been asked many times, I believe. <laughs> Future plans. Future plans. Um, we have a couple of tour possibilities in the works for early next year, one of which would include coming back to Europe. Uh, we're waiting to just find out more about that, so nothing to report. Uh, but other than that, as soon as we get home from these next couple of tours, we're just going to start writing new music. You know, write, record, release, and then hit the road again. So I'm sure we'll be back here soon. Whether it's early next year or late next year, um, we'll always, when we're not home writing, we'll be on tour. So definitely uh, stay tuned for more information. <laughs> I will, absolutely. Thanks for the interview. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me.